in 70 and 71. When we get that far, you won't be confused. That's all. Thanks, Pat. The other thing I wanted to recognize our fire department, Residential Fire Safety Institute 2001 Life Safety Achievement Award. In recognition of its work to keep its community free of deaths from fire in the year 2001, and its award this year. Again, accolades to our fire department. We have an excellent fire department in the city of Sheboygan. This goes to show it. So I don't see anyone here this evening for the fire department, but again, congratulations on a job. Well done, firemen. We'll put that up somewhere in City Hall. Okay. Okay, with that, we'll start the meeting. Notice of the 14th regular meeting of the Common Council. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Deberg? Here. Eberg? Here. Doyle? Excuse. Manny? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Ports? Here. Schultz? Here. Stephen? Here. Dee Van Akron? Excused, and Don's wife is in the hospital, and Terry and Peggy, I hope everything is going to go all right and let us know. T. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Excused. Wangeman? Here. Warner? Here. Winninger? Here. Thirteen present. <laughs> Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes of the previous meeting be accepted and adopted as entered on the record. Second. Moved and seconded that the minutes of the last council meeting be seconded and, second and uh, adopted and seconded for the record. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Perez, would you lead us in a pledge, please? We have two hearings this evening, and after I read both of them, if you'd like to speak on the hearings, please step up the microphone and give us your name and address. The first one is proposed assessment for replacement of lead and or galvanized iron water laterals in South 13th Street from Pennsylvania Avenue to approximately 200 feet south. Number two, proposed assessment for replacement of lead and or galvanized iron water laterals in South Commerce Street from Pennsylvania Avenue to Indiana Avenue. Any interested persons wishing to be heard on any one of the hearings? Okay. Sir, could you state your name and address, please? For My me? name is James Schnorr. I live at 5337 Heatherfield Court, Sheboygan. I'm sorry, spell your last name, please. Could you spell your spell last name, sir? S-C-H-N-U-R. And your street again was 5337? Heatherfield Court. Everfield? Heather, Heather. Heatherfield. 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 Never heard of it. <laughs> and you'll be speaking on number two? Pardon? You're going to be speaking on number two, I yeah. believe? Yeah. Okay. His first name was James. James. Okay. Okay, they, they put a water main in uh, adjacent to our building at uh, 1030 South 9th Street, the old Holly's Bar. I don't have any questions on the malt that they charged me, but they buried the water main with concrete and so before letting me know for me to get a plumber to put the, the water main into the building. They put a one inch water main in up to the shutoff box and five more feet we could have got a plumber to drill a hole through the foundation wall and run a copper pipe in and put a new water meter in the inside. Because right now we got half inch leaded pipes going into the building. And uh, they said that requires copper pipes so if you require the copper pipe they should have notified us so that we can get a plumber to put it in we go it's cross street from capsules and there's a half a dozen plumbers an hour pulling in and out of that i know that we could have pulled a permit real quick and uh brought the copper pipe in they sent me a bill for two thousand dollars and and what i'll tell me about it they said everything's gonna be fine open up your doors you know, in case we gotta get into the building. We opened up the door so they can come into the building. And uh, I left, next day I come back, the hole's buried, so I assume it's done. 
I think the day later they poured concrete on top of it when they poured the street. And I went in the basement and I, and, uh, I looked down there and I noticed the old pipes were still coming in the wall. So I said, well, that's, that's a waste, you know. A couple weeks later I get a bill for $2,000. So I figure if I got to pay the $1,935, they should have got me some copper pipes inside the building. Or let me at least know when the hole is there for me to get a plumber there ahead of time so my plumber can bring the copper pipe five feet into the building, which would have been a matter of $250, you know, for me to pay a plumber. Now if I got to do it, it's probably going to cost $2,000 because I got to dig it up. You got six inches of concrete on, on the sidewalk. And you got a water shutoff box right there. When they took up the first hunk of concrete, they actually destroyed the water shutoff box, so they had to put a new one in. So it's probably going to happen to us again. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a big headache now. You got six inches of concrete, you got to dig it up, and then they compacted it. They halfway knocked down the building while they're doing it because they used a big back hole and they banged the ground, you know, to break up the concrete. And I think every building on the block must have half fell down because they're old buildings there. Instead of jackhammering the concrete, they used a back hole. And it looked like the guy killed himself every time he bounced in the machine, you know. So he was, he was definitely doing damage to the buildings. I got dust all over the basement. Mortar falling out of the, the foundation. Cracks all over the outside of the brick building. You know. I just think they, they did it in a poor workmanship like manner. They should have contacted me and they should have let me know that uh, the water main was coming in that day so I could have got a plumber. That's my, my big issue on that. You know, they sent me a bill for $1,935. It's like they took a pot of gold, put it six feet underground, and he buried it with six inches of concrete. All right? Okay, thank you. And if they want me to pay the money, I'll pay the money, but I want them to dig up the sidewalk and let me get at the water shut off box so we can pay our plumber to bring the copper in. I'm not asking them to run my copper pipe in the building. I'm just letting them, letting them know that they can dig it up again the way it should have been. Let me know about it so I can bring my copper pipe in. Okay. Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Okay. Your Honor, I move that the hearings be closed. Moved and seconded that the hearings be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Steve. Uh, the first appointments are to the Special Committee on Pet Fancier Regulations. All their person, uh, Vanderweel, Bauman, Peter Fullerton, Melanie Nick, and Nicole Linnow, signed by the mayor. That can be confirmed. Okay. Is that the only one you have? Yeah. I move that the mayor's appointments be confirmed. Moved and seconded that appointments be confirmed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And another appointment dated today's date. If I submit the following appointment for your consideration, Paulette Enders to the position of Director of City Development for a five-year term commencing November 4 and terminating November 3, 2007. Signed by the Mayor. That will lay over. Public oh, Forum, Pat? No one. Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. An alderman must file a notice of non-candidacy with the clerk's office by 5 p.m. Friday, December 27th, or any time prior to that date. Nomination papers can be taken out December 1st and must be back in the clerk's office by the first Tuesday in January. To wait until December 27th to announce that would not be right, as this does not provide sufficient time for others who may be interested if they knew the position was going to be vacant to make a decision and get nomination signatures. For that reason, I am announcing this evening that I will not be a candidate for re-election next council year 2003-2004. With making that decision and announcing it now, I hope it gives everyone time to reflect and consider their time and talents and decide if they want to give back to their community and be a part of the decision-making process shaping the future of Sheboygan for their children and other residents of our fine city. I came on the council midterm July 16, 1990, when Alderman Pat Monahan moved out of the district. 
I want to thank the residents of the 5th District for having given me the opportunity to serve them since then. Six times they have re-elected re me. For that, I am grateful and appreciative. I have enjoyed my time on the Council. It has been a tremendously rewarding experience and that I have had the opportunity to be a part of the decision-making process, shaping and giving direction to our city for 12 plus years. 1997-98, I was Council President. In my speech to the Council at that time, I said downtowns were becoming cultural centers rather than commercial centers. I think we see that today with the Sheboygan Theater or the Wild Center for the Performing Arts as it is known, the Children's Museum, the expansion of the Kohler Arts Center, the library, all tremendous improvements and attractions to our downtown. The Sheboygan Marina and Harbor Center that I enthusiastically supported from the beginning has been an attraction encouraging economic development in this area. I have served under two mayors, Mayor Schneider and you, Mayor Schramm. I want to thank both of you for having given me the privilege and opportunity to serve on every committee that we have. At one time or another during these 12 years, I have been chairman of every committee except Public Works. I look back on these 12 years with great satisfaction that I gave it my best efforts, and I believe most of the time it was recognized and appreciated. I say most of the time because we don't always agree. If we did, there would, not be, there would be no need for all of us and I know I can be rather obstinate. I know that because my wife tells me so. <laughs> but we discuss the issue and we move on. I have never held a grudge because of how a vote went. I want to thank all the department heads and their staffs, every one of them, for the cooperation and assistance they have given me. Everyone came through 100% every time I asked for information or assistance. Although I am announcing this evening that I will not be a candidate for re-election in April, I can assure you I will continue to serve until then and be as active as I have been in the, in the past to improve the quality of life for the residents of the 5th District and the City of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Schultz. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, I would move that all ROs be accepted and filed, all committee reports be accepted and adopted. All resolutions, general ordinances, and sub substitute general ordinances be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be ado adopted, all resolutions, ordinances, substitute ordinances be put upon their passage. That's 14.1 through 14.39. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Manny, Aye. Moody, Aye. Perez, Aye. Ports, Aye. Schultz, Aye. Stephan, T. Van Akron, Aye. The, uh, Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1440 and 41 to be referred. 1442 we'll hold for 1461. 1443 through 49 to be referred. 1450 would like to send that to salary and grievance. Oh, Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. If you don't mind, I'd like to address that. Sure. October 2nd, the Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee met. The agenda included two items. One was to review the Council Budget Policy formula Formulation Survey. Another one was discussion recommendations for the 2003 budget. They are meeting again October 24th. One of the agenda items is the 2003 budget review. I am a little disappointed that if they did review the council budget policy for formation survey, there have been no recommendations from the committee. The survey committee, the survey summary indicates nine respondents agree to support a hiring freeze. So it seems like a given that this resolution will be approved. This scares me. The resolution provides for exceptions, but we, as we have seen in the past hiring freeze, the council is reluctant to allow exceptions. The economic development manager was not hired yet when the city planner retired. The city planner position was advertised, but the council would not approve hiring or filling that position until later. I believe that department and the city were harmed by not filling the position expediently. Some positions simply cannot be left vacant. 
City development is a very crucial department. That department is still in transition. A person has been hired to replace the city planner, but I would not recognize him if I bumped into him. We need high profile people in those positions, movers and shakers. The police and fire departments will work with other, the police and fire departments will work other employees overtime to cover vacant positions because they cannot work shorthanded. And we've seen that. Their overtime uh, budgets are, are uh, extremely high. Small departments are hurt more by a hiring freeze than larger departments because they do not have the flexibility to move people around. Rather than a hiring freeze, we need a policy to review all vacant positions to de determine if the position is needed, can it be part-time, can one or more other employees pick up the job duties. Before we institute another hiring freeze, I think we need to look at how we manage people, and I've said this before many times. Do we need the level of management that we have? Can departments be reorganized? For instance, public works, do we need lead men, foremen, supervisors, superintendents, deputy director and a director? Do we need three deputy chiefs in the fire department along with the rest of the management staff? Does the police department need a chief, two deputy chiefs, captains, and the rest of their management staff? I think there are many things we can do be, uh, to become more efficient and reduce costs before instituting a hiring freeze. To institute a hiring freeze without doing anything else to imp improve efficiency only hurts the city departments and causes stress for other employees. These questions make management and department heads uncomfortable, but change is coming. Change will have to be made. Everyone is, has to approach his or her job with a good attitude. When something needs to be done, saying I cannot do that because it is not in my job description is just not acceptable, and it has been said. Management and employees will have to talk to each other, and if something needs to be done, ask how can we together accomplish this not say it is not in my job description. I'm disappointed that R0264-0203 was accepted and filed rather than sent to Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee. This is the tabulated results of the Council Budget Policy Formulation Survey and a summary of those responses. If it had been sent to them, I think they would have been more inclined to address the survey results and make some recommendations. As it is, we created the survey. 13 of 15 aldermen took the time to complete it. Two didn't even uh, do that. Mike Cutts tabulated the results and created a summary of the survey responses. Then it was put in the cons consent agenda and filed end of discussion. Was all of this an exercise in futility? Thank you. Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, just as a quick comment, um, we are discussing this at Strategic. The meeting that he's upset about that we didn't get a recommendation happened to be canceled and that's why there was no recommendation coming out. And it is scheduled for- 24th. The 20, rescheduled for the 24th. So these things are being discussed as strategic and the reason why you haven't heard anything is because the last meeting was canceled. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Okay, so that one will go to seller and grievance. 1451 will lie over. 1452 through 58 to be referred along with 59 and 60. 1461 was 1442 by finance, recommending approving amendment two to TID number 10. Alderman Van Akron. I would move that the committee report be accepted and adopted. It's moved and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted and a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Eberg. <coughs> Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Tevin Akron. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Winninger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 1462 and 1463 will lie over. 1464 through 67 to be referred. Matters laid over, 1336 and 1330 and 1354, an RO by the City Plan Commission, recommending sale of former casket site, 1354, by Alderman Warner author authorizing the sale of the sh former Sheboygan casket site. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept and file the RO, and uh, we pass the resolution. Move to second, we accept and file the RO and pass the resolution under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, Martin's Hardware Group, operators of Trilling Hardware, wish to expand their business and this will have a positive impact on the city. 
We will receive $10,000 for the property and the city's tax base will be increased. Trilling is one of the city's oldest businesses at over 150 years of age. The plan commission unanimously voted for this sale after considering the other two offers and the plan commission is recommending this sale. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Warner. I agree with you. They will make a good cornerstone store there for the redevelopment of, of Michigan Avenue in 2005 and what they're planning on doing will fit into that very nicely. So hopefully everything goes well. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Ports? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Tevin Akron? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg, aye. 13 eyes. Motion carried. Thank you, Craig. 1337, along with 1353, an RO by the City Plan Commission recommending the sale of two parcels of city land in Cold Spring subdivision. 